Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's back to talk a little NASCAR. His choice, not mine. What's going on, Jim? I mean, it's our first like semi-regular race of the year because it's not a super speedway where there's super high variance, not a road course where a guy could be leading and run off the track all by himself. So I'm excited for a little bit of normalcy for once this week and excited to get back to some, you know, some foundational type NASCAR betting for this week. Then let's get into it. Let's start chatting here about the Dixie Vodka 400. And we'll talk about uh, the guy that you want to at least play something on. That's Denny Hamlin, where, and to me, just knowing how little I know about it, right? Usually Denny Hamlin's at plus 500. That just seems too big of a number for Denny Hamlin, who's obviously a very good driver, no matter the track. Why is Denny Hamlin really 5-1 to one here? Yeah, usually I am not super inclined to bet a driver whose odds are as short as Hamlin's are for this week because there's a lot of weird stuff that can happen. There is still variance even at the non-super high variance track. So 5-1, to one, I've got to have a lot of confidence that that driver will be running up front and have a chance to win this race. And I think that with Hamlin... That's all in place for this week. And, you know, you look at the, the number that are 5-1, to one, it's there for a good reason. It's because he was tremendous on tracks like this and this exact track last year as well. He won at Homestead, the same track last year, also won in Kansas. And that's a similar track. It is a flatter one-and-a-half-mile track. There were six total races on those tracks last year. Hamlin won two of those, again, including this one here. He had a top three average running position in both those races, and he also had a fourth-place average running position in the second Las Vegas race, which took place during the playoffs. So we saw him three out of the six races on uh, flatter one-and-a-half-mile tracks, running up front, leading laps, contending for wins, I expect the same thing to happen here on Sunday, once again, back in Homestead. Now, Hamlin, in the past, when he's run well on these tracks, has had to work his way through the pack. He won a race, I believe in Kansas, it was, during the playoffs back in 2019, where he started in the middle of the pack, and he still led, you know, like 150 laps in that race. This time, that's not a concern. He's starting first. He is on the pole for this race. So it's easy access to laps led, easy access to the front of, front of the pack, no weird strategy necessary to get him there. He's already there. So Hamlin, yeah, it's a shorter number than I usually want to bet for any track, but I think it's justified for this week for Hamlin. My win simulations have him winning the race right in line with this number. So if you want to get action on one of the favorites for this race, my favorite route is via Hamlin. I think that that number is deserved and still potentially maybe a bit undervalued. So if you can find Hamlin at five, at five to one, I'm inclined to take that number. It's interesting. You're on uh, a different side here. I, th I thought seeing Denny Hamlin five to one was actually big. You're pointing out that it's actually a really small number and that's not something that you normally would want to place a wager on here uh, because it is so short. So, we saw it a little bit differently. Obviously, you're the expert. I trust you. Denny Hamlin, 5-1, to one, something worth considering here, and I'm having a reason, uh, over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Another driver that you like to win here, Jim, is Ryan Blaney, who's 14-1 to one to win this thing overall. You explain why you were in on Denny Hamlin. Why Blaney? Yeah, my numbers for my model in NASCAR tend to like Ryan Blaney every time he is in the race. Even when he's not in the race, you know, they'll probably still like him a little bit. But uh, this happens every week. They say I should bet Ryan Blaney. It has not worked out yet. He hasn't really won that often in non-super speedway races. Last year, won in Talladega, won in 2018 on a road course. So tracks like this, we have not seen Blaney convert on the speed he has had. But the speed has been there. And at some point, he's going to close out one of these races. And we're getting him at a discount at 14 to 1 because he has not been able to close out thus far. But we know the speed will be there. Going back to last year, again, there were six races at flatter one and a half mile tracks. In those six races, Ryan Blaney had a top eight average running position every single time. He had a top five average running position in four out of the six races. And one of those was here in Homestead. In that race, he led 70 laps and finished third. Again, Danny Hamlin did win, but Blaney was a contender during that race, ran out front a bunch, and could have potentially won that race as well. If you look at 11 total races at the one-and-a-half-mile tracks last year, expanding beyond just the flatter ones, he had five top fives and nine top tens. So... He was consistently running at the front. If you look at the implied win odds at uh, 14 to 1, that's 6.7%. But in my simulations, he wins 10.2% of the time. That's actually quite a bit of value for a driver at the top end of the odds board. Sure, that's because, you know, my win sims aren't baking in the narrative that Blaney can't finish out races, but he's a year more mature now. He's had more experience. He's in his second year with his new crew chief. I think that all adds up to potentially seeing some progression out of Ryan Blaney late in races. He was contending often last year, 
But if he takes that next step this year with his new crew chief being in place, I think we could see Blaney start to capitalize on the speed that he has and close things out for a win. So 14 to one, I think we're getting him at a discount because of that narrative that Blaney can't finish out wins. You know, kind of like the Tony Finau or the Xander Shoffley recently of NASCAR. I'd expect that to change in the very near future. So I want to gobble up Ryan Blaney at 14 to one while I can still get him at double digit odds. Ryan Blaney, always a driver that's around the mix, but can't get past the finish line as the leader. You compared it to Tony Finau, Xander Shoffley, uh, Ian Goff. We'll see what Ryan Blaney can do here this weekend. Maybe he could break through. And, and Jim, you'll just keep pounding this uh, this number, really, until he does cross that finish line as the first driver that does. He's 14-1 to 1 here this week. We'll see if he gets the job done. One final driver to talk about, but we're not talking about him to win. You're betting on him to finish in the top 10. That's Matt Z. Benedetto. He's plus 230 right now at the FanDuel Sportsbook to finish inside the top 10. Why do you believe this is a good number? It's because Di Benedetto proved he was worthy of this number last year. Last year was his first year with Wood Brothers Racing, which is affiliated with Penske Racing, teammates to, to Ryan Blaney, Brad Keselowski, and Joey Logano, effectively. And he took advantage of the speed that they gave him on this track type. Again, six total races on this track type. Di Benedetto had three top fives. Those were his only top fives the entire season. So this was his best track type that he had, and he converted that into quality runs. Now, sometimes that was because of pit strategy, but... In order to win or to you know finish top three, which he did three separate times, you have to have a fast car. You have to be in position to capitalize on pit strategy, and Di Benedetto did exactly that. It's also not as if pit strategy doesn't matter. Like being able to capitalize on that is certainly intriguing. If you bet him to finish top ten, that's definitely uh, a, a good number. Again, he finished in the top ten four out of eleven races on one and a half mile tracks last year. That's a thirty six percent rate. His implied odds here are at thirty percent. So. I would actually take the over on 36% for him this year on the one and a half mile track. So getting him at 30% here, I think is advantageous. Now the obvious counters that Di Benedetto is starting 37th. So he has a lot of ground to make up here and that does matter for sure. But it's a long race, 400 miles. It is a track where passing is relatively easy and we could see some pit strategy come into play for Di Benedetto once again. So Really good on this track type, good equipment with Wood Brothers Racing, and a guy I think is a bit undervalued in the betting markets in general. Not necessarily a guy I think who has the upside to win this race, but I do think he's very much in play for a top 10, especially if you're going to give me plus 230 on the odds. Getting Di Benedetto at this number, I, I think you have to do it. Plus 230, like you said, it's 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 something you just simply don't want to ignore here. At this track, Di Benedetto could be very, very successful. Just to finish inside the top 10, if not more, we'll see what he can do this weekend. That's going to do it for us here at FanDuel Hurry. Jim, we appreciate the time. Enjoy the race. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it. Uh, have a fantastic weekend. Hopefully we can get you in on some NASCAR betting or some DFS here in the very near future. With March Madness coming up and then the Masters, my schedule is a little booked, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens ultimately, especially tomorrow, where we'll be joined by Tom Vecchio to talk about a little NBA DFS, something I can tell you I'm much more interested in. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Seltzman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the race, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.